first hard fact of the day, 1,634 confirmed COVID cases yesterday. 1,634, 1,634. I always tell you this second wave is not a joke. We've confirmed that at least one of the new strains have been detected in Nigeria. And like the, uh, the doctor told you yesterday, these strains are stronger and more infectious than the original. The other day, you heard from a caller who told us how his seven-year-old daughter was hospitalized. So please, Lagos, take your precautions. Don't go out unless you cannot avoid going out. And when you do go out, wear your mask. Maintain your distance from people. Wash and sanitize your hand frequently. Let's keep ourselves and each other safe. And make sure you keep listening to Hard Facts, all right? For the most accurate information on COVID-19 and so much more. On the big three today, let's talk about a hotel allegedly putting hidden cameras in hotels. Then, let's talk about Rotimi Akeridolu blaming non-Nigerians for banditry in Ondo. And then let's talk about how RNA vaccines work and how the battle against COVID-19 is going. Yesterday, I spoke with Dr. Nyema Obwago of Yale University because of his work on the Pfizer vaccine. And he had a lot to say about this. If you missed it, you get to hear it again today. Today is Wednesday, so we're bringing you the glass ceiling. And on the glass ceiling, we're going to talk about unmarried police women getting dismissed for pregnancy, even though it's now illegal. We'll be speaking to a lawyer about what the current position of the law is. And then we're going to talk to yet another glass breaker. Her name is Mildred Okwa. She's an award-winning movie producer and director. And she'll let us uh, know about her journey. She'll tell us about her journey, tell us about her success happening at 4.30 on today's glass ceiling. On Balogun and Broad, we're going to talk about market fires. Why are they so common? What happens to the traders afterwards? How can we build better markets? We're also going to talk about the current ban on new SIM cards. How is it affecting business? Six, uh, um, that's uh, between five and six. Now you get news updates on the top of every hour. And after the news at six, you and I will talk about the rest of the day. We'll talk about all, all we talked about between three and six, right? So don't tune off when I say goodnight at um, six, because after the news, I'll come back on. And we can talk about all the subjects you wanted, really, really wanted to call in and say something about, but you couldn't because, well, our phone lines are very, very busy. Just a minute will come your way. You need to listen so that you can play. But let's get started with today's Big Three. Big Three. The Big Three. On Hard Facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. Is it common for hotels to spy on guests? Is it common for hotels to spy on guests? Will state police improve the response to herder farmer violence? State police, would it improve the response to herder farmer violence? And did Dr. Wago answer your COVID-19 questions? Did he do that? Did he answer your COVID-19 questions? Our first story is the hidden camera scandal at an Ogun State Hotel, the Pavilion Hotel in Ayekbe Town, Odobolu local government area. Some guests in the hotel found hidden cameras, more than one hidden cameras in their room's AC. So they got upset. They were very understandably upset. They challenged the management. They started going from room to room. And guess what? There were hidden cameras everywhere. There were hidden cameras everywhere. And so they made a video about it and they put it on the internet. If you're watching us right now on Facebook, we're streaming that video for you. If you cannot watch at the moment, well, listen to the audio. So you can see, all right, this is the hotel. Look, video the hotel surroundings very well so that they won't deny, they won't have evidence against us. Let us I, 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 need, I need the name, sir. Let I need, need the name. name of the hotel. We'll check online. Let us go check the bathroom whether there is camera inside. No? So far, I can't find any camera. Who knows whether it's hidden inside the roof or in sockets. <laughs> Things happen in, happening in Nigeria. Inside AC. You would never find out or you would never even figure out that there was a camera installed here. That's the whole, that's the whole for camera. 
Please, you guys should be careful. Hello. Hello. Imagine, Hello. you're putting camera in our rooms. Yes, yes, yes. You're putting camera in our rooms, yes, right? Yes, yes. Infusion of people's privacy. See people's nakedness. Video in my law Insta blog. Video in my law Insta blog. You're putting cameras in the people's room, right? What the name is the hotel? Video in my law Insta, Insta blog. What the is the name of the hotel? What? If you were watching, you saw the, uh, what I'm guessing is the manager at the hotel um, answering the young man who was taking the video saying yes, 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 yes. Really, really, really scary stuff. Now the police are involved, the Ogun State Police Command. They say that they've summoned the owner of the hotel for questioning. He allegedly lives in Lagos, so he's expected to go from here to Udubulu to answer their questions. And a lot of Nigerians are, are wondering, they're asking whether that's enough. They're asking whether the management and other staff shouldn't be questioned or even detained. And then, of course, the big question is, how rampant is this? I mean, that's got to be a concern for everybody, especially people who use hotels. I know many of you who listen to me have to travel because of work or for business. And that means that you stay in quite a few hotels every year. So I wonder what you think about the idea of someone watching you at a time when you expect total privacy. Now, a lot of people, when they heard this story, they only thought about the salacious part, right? But there's more at stake here than somebody seeing you naked or seeing you having sex. Like Femi Branch, the actor, said, someone could be listening to your sensitive phone calls. Or they could see your valuables and your money. And now, armed with that information, they can set you up. In fact, Femi Branch asked the police to check on the welfare of all past guests of the hotel to make sure that they haven't been robbed, kidnapped or killed since staying at that hotel. Now, some people are saying that those cameras may have been there for security reasons. But what you have happening around the world is not security cameras inside the hotel room. You don't put security cameras inside the hotel, the hotel room itself. That's what happens in other parts of the world. Nobody should be able to see what a guest is doing in their room without their permission. So instead, what hotels do is put security cameras in the hallways. As long as the camera can see the room door, the camera can see everybody who comes in, who comes out of the room. And that's good enough for security. So this cannot be about security. But even if it was about security, it shows serious disrespect for a guest's right to privacy. Or do you disagree? 0700-993-993-993. What do you think about this situation? How rampant do you think this thing is? If you regularly stay in hotels, how did you feel when you saw this story or heard this story? What will you change about your routine when you stay in hotels going forward as a result of this story? What do you think can be done to protect guests and other members of the public? 0700-993-993-993-0700-993-993-993. Ife is in a solo today. Hello, Ife. Thank you so much for calling us. If is this Nigeria Info Radio Station? Please? Yes, this is Nigeria Info Radio Station, yes. Okay, please, I'm calling to make inquiries about how to place an advert in your radio station, something that can be aired, like a personal paid announcement. All right, stay on the line so that they'll retrieve your call, and then okay. um, we'll give you a call later on, okay? We'll give you a call back later on. So I should st stay on the line. Yes, just stay on the line. They'll take your call back. The call screen okay. now will retrieve your call right now, and then okay, um, get okay. that information from you. All right, sorry. thank you very much for calling us. All right, 99.3. Right, hello, hello, Sandra. Come up here very quickly. Thank you for calling me. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, Sandra. Yes, I'm here at Chukwebuka. Welcome. Go ahead. Yeah, I know. I know you could hear me. Uh, this is not new, not strange. <laughs> yeah, but I tell you 
Something just yes, must be done, Sandra. Be this should not be struggled at the carpet. It tells us that when you lodge in any hotel, please look around. When you're in any room, it could be hidden where you will not even see, but when you look around thoroughly, you will fish it out. Because I don't see how somebody should be monitoring and looking at someone's privacy, nakedness. I mean, you're doing, you're doing, you're writing, you're hiding your money, you're doing something, somebody's seeing you, and it will set you up before you know it. Hello? Oh, no. Okay. I don't know who's screening the calls for me, but please stop. Thank you, because I think you're just um, not doing it right. So please stop until, you know, um, she can come back in there with you. Hmm? Thank you. All right, then. 0700 Listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Hello, thanks for calling us. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Paul. Paul, what Sunday. do you think about this story, this situation? Um, wow, that is, that is very, 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 very wrong. How can they be like infringing someone's privacy? Ah, I, do, they, do they think this is this is Big Brother Part 4 or what? And they will be looking at someone's privacy. The, 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 the hotel needs to be sued in a big way. Do you, do, you, do you think it's enough to invite the owner of the hotel? Do you think there should of be course. more happening? Yeah, 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 of course, of course. That, I have never seen where that thing happens. Someone like us that we do, we do sleep in the hotel mm. back to back. Mm. I don't know why that kind of thing is happening. <sighs> wow. No, wow. Well, wow. Thank you for calling. <laughs> said, now, wow. Shade is in the catcher. Hello, Shade. Hi, Sandra. How are you doing today? I'm good. Welcome. Go ahead. Yeah, so I actually didn't think it was a problem until when I heard it. And I was like, and if I had to go back to the last time I traveled within Nigeria, and I was like, hmm, did it happen at the hotel? Hmm. Because what I'm, I'm all, I'm, what I'm used to hearing a lot about is Airbnb. Because hmm. the first time I used an Airbnb, someone was like, you need to be careful because a lot of people put cameras and stuff and don't tell you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But so hotels, I was actually very shocked when I heard about it. I was like, what? I mean, they, you're thinking of why and everything. But the second big question I want to know is, what is the Nigerian law about it, about privacy? You know, because should the cops have arrested somebody already instead of just inviting for questioning? Do you, do you understand what I'm asking? Yeah, I understand. But that's the thing, though. Um, so, so there's even a debate about whether or not um, privacy uh, has been violated here. You know, there are, are, even, there are even people who are arguing, Seth that the people who have committed a crime are the guests at the hotel because they tampered with property that doesn't belong to them. Oh, gosh, I'm faint right now. Stop. <laughs> I haven't heard that argument. Oh, I have Get heard out. that argument. I'm serious. <laughs> now, now I've heard it all. We, we're definitely living in the twilight zone in this country. Because like, I know in other countries, the rest of the world, it's, there's no argument that it's a privacy issue because your guest has a right to privacy in the hotel room. Mm-hmm. And if you do put a, a camera in there, you're supposed to let the you know, guest know. Mm. Okay, this is interesting. Oh. <laughs> no more stuff for me in Nigeria. Ah. There's nothing protecting me. Maybe this maybe, right. maybe stay in the really expensive ones, you know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, but how do we know those? Because that's what I know. I mean, I, I'm like a hotel snob. I'm usually trying to, but you know, you go to some places where you don't have that. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So, yeah, so now, like, what are your options? It's not them telling you that you might be the one because you found a camera that is not supposed to. Okay, so then, guys, I need to drink a cup of water. Oh, okay. Thank you, Sandra. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Shadi. <laughs> David is in Victoria Island. Hello, David. David, are you there? Ah, oh, David, sorry about that. Call back if you can. If you just joined the show, our first story on today's Big 3 is the hidden camera scandal at an Ogun State Hotel. It's called the Pavilion Hotel in Ayekbe town uh, uh, of uh, Odobolu local government. Some guests of the hotel found a hidden camera in their room's AC and um, they got upset and they challenged the management and they started going from room to room and they found more hidden cameras. And I played the video for you. If you're watching us on Facebook at the moment, you're watching the video uh, at the moment and you're seeing what transpired in that hotel. Very, very scary stuff. So many questions arising from, from this. How rampant is it? If you're a business person or you work, you know, in a place that requires that you travel all the time and stay in a lot of hotels, how does learning about this make you feel? Kunle Nikaja, hello. Hi, Kunle. Kunle, are you there? Ah, 
Kunle, unfortunately, isn't there anymore. Let's see WhatsApp and see the messages you're leaving for us. Good afternoon. I advise people that whenever they lodge in a hotel, they should switch off the light in the room and ensure that everywhere is dark. Switch on their phone cameras, hover everywhere in the room with their phone cameras. And if they observe any red dot light on their phone screen, that is a hidden camera. All right, that's a helpful tip. From Stanley, now your boss. Stanley, thank you so much for your message. Christopher is joining us from Satellite Town today. Hello, Christopher. Christ Hello. Yes. Hello. Welcome. Uh, my name is Christopher. Christopher, welcome. Go ahead. Uh, I had one this issue when I was in Ghana because I did on with my, on move with my wife. Yeah, I've got in Ghana there. Yeah. Okay. Hello. It happened to you in Ghana. Yes, as in when I went with my wife, in, as in we went for honeymoon. Oh, wow. Yeah. What happened? Tell me what happened. We went for honeymoon, I think last year. So I don't, at the end of the time, saw one camera behind the, um, the, um, the AC. I said, what is this? Let me check. And I have to take the stool and I view it properly. It was, um, um, it was, uh, camera, it didn't camera there. I have to call the manager, the manager there. He said it does for, it, it does for all um, uh, online purposes. I said, why? Then I have to call my brother there in Lagos. They were, they, they were so angry with them. Your brother was so angry with the hotel or the hotel was angry with your brother? Yes, yes. My brother in Lagos, I have to call him. Now, what was the reason the hotel gave? Pardon? What was the what was the excuse the hotel gave for they their behavior? They were they were apologizing and begging. Say that it won't happen again. It's just and sometimes people do steal their properties. People do steal some of their belongings. I said, well, I I come here for animal. Why would I want to stealing with my wife here? And he didn't tell me that they, that that they, you are having a camera here. I was hungry, honestly. I left your test. Wow. Yeah. Did did you did you create a scene? Did people know that? No, no I, yeah, I I I almost broke the TV. The TV set there. I almost broke it, but then the security came and then started begging. I said, no, I have to take this into your, to the police. Then they have to beg and I apologize. But besides that, me and my wife, we didn't have any sexual intercourse in, within there. Mm. So we have to leave the hotel and then probably go for. Uh, another place. Hmm. What's the name of this hotel so that people don't go there? Dambat at um, Kumasi. Dambat. Yes, at okay. Kumasi, yes, yes. Christopher, I'm terribly sorry you experienced that. And thank you so much for sharing your story with us. All right. All right. We've got Chika and Apapa on the line. Hello, Chika. Yes. Good evening, Sandra. Good evening. Welcome. Yes. Um, I am listening to the, the conversation. Because I want to believe that the excuse will be that it will be for security purposes. Hmm. But it is not good for such thing to happen in the hotel. They will not, the matter will just be that sorry, it is just uh, for security purposes. So that's all. So I, I think for people that normally stay in the hotel, I think they have to be careful and take it as a precaution hmm. and learn from it. It doesn't, it's just that it has happened and it's, it's something that we, must, we should learn from. Thank you. Thank you, Chica, for calling us. But like I said earlier on, if it's about security, if you have a camera in the hallway, that handles all your security uh, 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 concerns. If your worry is that they're going to steal from your hotel room, what's the worst that they can steal? Should be towel. Towel and soap and shower gel. That's it. Like, it's not like they're going, it's not, it's not like they're going to carry your TV. And if they, if they carry TV, people go and inspect the rooms before checkout. So if you go to the room and the TV in the hotel is missing, then you can raise a, a concern about that, if security is the concern. Huh? We've got Peter on the line, but I don't know if we have enough time to um, let Peter go on, but let's just try. Peter, hi. Yeah, hello. Welcome, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I've been listening to this program mm -hmm. and first uh, regarding this issue about um, the hotel camera. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is that Nigerians don't have time for law. If they have time for law, mm. they will deal with every problem. Mm. You don't need a police in that case. Okay. You sue the hotel mm. and you claim damages, provide the evidence, mm. they will pay. By the time they do it once or twice, mm. other hotels will know. 
And you need to gather your evidence, make them, get them to write down mm. that they made a mistake and that, they, you know, they put all these cameras mm -hmm. by error, mm -hmm. whatever it is. They must commit themselves. Mm. And once they do that, you file a lawsuit. The problem is that Nigerians don't have time to go to court. Mm. They're always afraid of court. Mm. Court is meant to resolve problems. Court is meant to deal with issues. Mm. If, I were the, if I was the person involved, mm -hmm. I don't have time for police. I would have sued them and I would get results. Right. And then I'll publish it in the media and then everybody will learn. Peter, so how, how, how rampant publish. do you think uh, uh, cameras in hotel rooms are? How rampant do you think that problem is? Ah, uh, well, for people that use the hotel, but I know it's very rampant. Yeah, thank you very much for calling us, Peter. We need to take that break. It's uh, 26 minutes past three. Don't go away, Lagos. More conversation, more talk, more right after this. Now be waiting that they argue against uh, the All Progressive Congress, APC, that if it's your Gonga party for Obodo, Nigeria. So therefore, for you to get mad, so that's okay. For waiting concern you for the party and for Nigeria's part, part, the chairman of APC Mobilization and Sensitization Committee for youths, women, and people living with disabilities, PLWD, and the executive governor of Kogi State, His Excellency Alaji Yaya Bello. They especially invite our Gonga Nigerian youth, the Sorosoke generation, to register and join the All Progressive Congress, APC, for the party membership registration plus including revalidation exercise where they start from january 26 2021 venue now for all polling units for the country 10 now 9 a.m 24 p.m every day this story to come out from the, the chairman of apc mobilization and sensitization committee for youth women and people living with disabilities his excellency alaji yaya Bello, governor of kogi state <laughs> Colandia Eva Milk, right nutrients for a healthy breakfast. Something big is about to happen to you on radio. I bet you never saw it coming. The dynamic duo joined together by not just radio, but everything in between. It's more than just a radio experience. It's an experience of a lifetime. It's the feel of Lagos. Fire! From the mainland Mujie, 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 Mujie. to the island. Da, 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 da. On your number one station for talk, 99.3 Nigeria Info. <laughs> Come, let's talk. Tune in every weekday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's a whole brand new What's Up Lagos with the Techers. I am Collins. I am Andrea. Tech. <laughs> Nigeria Info. Your number one station for talk. Let's talk. This is the big three. The big three on hard facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. <laughs> It's 3.29, Lagos, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. And if you just tuned in, you're listening to The Big Three. On The Big Three, we bring you three of the biggest stories of the day every Tuesday to Thursday. If it's a Monday, we bring you the biggest stories that broke during the weekend. If it's a Friday, we bring you the biggest stories from well, three of those big stories. The big stories today is a hotel really putting hidden cameras in hotel rooms. Our second story, though, it's all about security. First of all, the Lagos State House of Assembly wants state police. Yesterday, the Speaker Mudashiro Basa moved a motion for state police, which passed. Now, of course, the motion is powerless. You need a constitutional amendment to legalize state police by moving policing from the executive list to the concurrent list. And so the Assembly is now writing to President Buhari and the National Assembly to make that amendment. Here's what Abbas has said on the House floor. He said, quote, 
The House has always been at the forefront of calls for state police right from the Fourth Assembly. The House is always right on target and always at the truth. We are not going to stop until we have a constitution that talks about federalism to have state police. We must latch on this opportunity. The community police initiative a few months ago is not good enough. We want the state police that have the wherewithal to ensure that lives and property are safe. And it is my sincere pleasure to call again on the president and the National Assembly on the need for state police. End quote. Now, support for state police has gotten louder in the last few months due to the security situation. One of the big security concerns is the ongoing herder farmer dispute. There's been a lot of controversy over who is behind the violence. Last month, Magban, uh, that's Mieti Ala Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, said that bandits are disguising as their members to attack communities. This week, Governor Keredolu of Ondo State says that, oh, it's not Nigerians. He told the Nigeria Immigration Service that most of the attacks in his state are carried out by foreigners hiding in forests. He said they come from other countries with their cattle and they attack farmlands from the woods. So he wants the Immigration Service to do a better job securing the borders. But whoever you believe about the root causes of um, the crisis clearly has worsened the security situation. And it raises the question about whether the states have the power to handle it if they don't have state policing. Right now, Sunday, Igboho is going from state to state in the southwest. Some people are applauding his actions because they say he's protecting innocent uh, communities. Others are criticizing him because they say that he's inciting violence and he's causing reprisal attacks against whole ethnic groups. But you have a third group of people who are saying if state governments and federal governments were handling the crisis, there would be no room for a Sonde Igboho to become relevant. So the real question is, what should government be doing differently to handle this crisis? The Lagos State House of Assembly says it needs state police, but others are asking, Amote Konko, how far? Remember, Amote Kung had been recognized uh, by the federal government and it's operating under the permission of the federal government. So if Amote Kung cannot handle the situation, what makes the states so sure? that state police will handle the situation. 0700-993-993-993. Do you believe that state police can resolve the security crisis in the Southwest? What do you think about Akira Dulu's claim that foreign herdsmen are the ones behind the violence in Ondo State? WhatsApp is 080-959-75805, 080-959-75805. Twitter is at Nigeria Info FM and uh, Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. Frank in Ojo, hello. Happy Sandra. Thanks for calling us. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Do you know, I wanted to say that that app of camera was just for because, just because of security. But you, 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 you dropped something in my ear that makes me to know that it was wrong. Okay. Yes. Because if before you go into a hotel, if any camera should capture the, 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 the parlor and the passages and everywhere, and this is okay, mm. then the security personnel and the workers there will monitor you. If mm. you come, you register your name and your partner's name. Mm. You go inside the room. Before you leave, you, you both of you must go out together. Mm. You see, you know why I'm saying this? Why? 2015, when I was in the road, mm. they, cap- they used that camera, mm. that hotel camera, to capture one boy that killed a girl inside the hotel. Mm. So at the process of doing that, the manager have already told us I called the police. Then as he was trying to come out and he was arrested, then what did you do? What happened? Are you getting me now? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that was why I wanted to believe that it was for security reasons. Mm. No, that shouldn't be enough for them to be looking. But let's assume now that I went to a hotel now mm-hmm. with my baby now. Mm-hmm. They'll be looking at my Odogu or looking at how this place I'm doing. Is it good? It's wrong now. That is, uh, if, 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 if government should put mark on this or whatever that they are doing, now let them just use 
to you of the hotel now. I give an example so mm. that they will stop. But this thing is trampled everywhere. Mm. And it's not good now. It's not good. It's, it's, it's childish. It's not good. All right, Frank. Thank you very much. Now, of course, remember that I said it's not just about your Udugun. It's also about what conversations you're having in that hotel room. Huh? What, what if you're talking about a business deal? What if you have money on you? What if they plan with armed robbers to rob you? What if they plan with kidnappers to kidnap you? Because the conversations you're having in the hotel room shows them, oh, this one, who money? You know? We've got Lanre in uh, Aja on the line. Hello, Lanre. Hello. Thanks for calling Hello. us. Yes, Sandra. Welcome. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, this... Um Farmers, um, headers, and uh, foreign headsmen coming mm. in to kill uh, Nigerians. Mm. I'm sorry, that is not uh, the fact on ground. Okay. The fact on ground is that uh, we are in for planning conquest. And I'm sorry for the southern politicians who have decided to trade the lives of their people for political patronage. The governor of Ondo State is not being sincere to himself and to Nigerians. How come today there are foreign men who told the governor of Ondo State that these people are foreigners? I mean, he's the chief security officer of the state. I'm pretty sure How he has his information. He, who gave him that security report. How are you here in Lagos talking about a governor not being aware of, of the security situation in his own state? So before now, before he banned the the, the, the headers from Ondo Forest, why didn't he tell Nigerians then that this is foreigners? But he told Nigerians then that it was criminals who were infiltrating the herders, that it's not the herders, but the criminals. These and now he's people, told us the nationality of the criminals. He says they are foreigners. Uh, we, we are not fools. We are no longer children in this country. What these people, politicians are doing, mm. we at the end of the day, backfire against them. Landry, thank you very much for calling us. John in Ibejuleki, welcome. Yeah, Sandra, good afternoon. Good afternoon. John from Ibejuleki. Yes, welcome. Go ahead. All right. Uh, it is Sandra, concerning the state policing. Mm hmm I don't think that that thing will work. Okay. Uh -huh. It would have worked in a way that because of some plan, there's a plan that is, is on that ground. Because if you say, let's approve state police now, then both the South is they will have poli uh, their own police, which will make the federal government uh, not be able to, you know, to take full control of the South East. So I don't think they will permit that. Because of that reason. So, and uh, you see, like uh, Sunday Boho, hmm. I would have uh, begged him uh, to go to South East after he finishes with the uh, South, okay. like Yoruba. Hmm. Uh, because I know if he's there, nobody will go there to attack the Eastern Security Network if Sunday Boho is there uh, doing his work, which I think he knows best to do. So I am begging him that we will meet him also in the southeast. All right, that John. That is what I, I have to say. Thank you for calling. Smart on Twitter says, I have a friend who went to write exams in Ondo. She noticed the camera beside the TV while she was about to shower. And so she, she switched off the TV from the socket. And guess what? In the next 10 minutes, one of the staff came to her room and told her to put on the TV. But she told him that she did not need it. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Then Smart goes on to say, Sandra, the story about hidden camera in hotel rooms is very, very rampant. Do you know how much they make by selling out these leaked sex videos to porn sites? They make their money in dollars. Ask Uncle Jimmy Disu. The love of money will make people go to any length. Insane. This is insane. Adeda, your Florence says, um... It's only tall that it's their property. Shower gel, tissue, and the cream is yours because you paid for it. <laughs> okay. All right, I did I. Uh, Akande Muritala says, on the COVID-19 vaccine, an employee has been given a consent form 
to agree to be vaccinated and take responsibility for anything that happens to him thereafter. But it was there that it's not being forced on any employee. But no one can tell. Nobody knows the decision that can be taken by employers on whoever refuses to be vaccinated in the future. Akande Muritala, thank you for your message. Well, I don't think that that's a problem that Nigerians need to worry about just yet because the vaccines are not here yet. But I do think that I should bring you our final story on the Big Three today where, where we talked about uh, vaccines uh, on the show yesterday. We, we have at least four vaccines in circulation with possibly up to three more coming very soon. None of them are in Africa yet. And of course, lots of Nigerians um, have a lot of questions about them or, or they've been misinformed about them. And I, I, I want us all to be ready for when they are available, right? So that's why we talked to an expert yesterday. He's not just an expert. He's somebody who played a part in giving the world the Pfizer vaccine. His name is Dr. Onye Maubuago. He's from Yale University. And he was the principal investigator on the Pfizer clinical trial. He very graciously came on Hard Facts yesterday, 5 o'clock, to answer our questions. And here's some of what he said, which I think that you should listen to because it could help you debunk a lot of the theories that we often hear about COVID-19. Talk to me about the RNA vaccine. Talk, talk to me about how it's different from the other types of vaccines that came before it. Yeah, so there's many ways you can make vaccines. Um, some of the old traditional methods would include, uh, you know, attenuated strains. So mm. you can take either, a, a, for if it's a viral infection, a virus that looks like one virus, or you can use the same virus um, uh, and, you know, uh, tweak it a bit so that it's not infectious. And then that's the way you give it to people to help generate immune response. So an example would be like measles, mumps, rubella, those are live um, attenuated viruses. Okay. And there's protein-based vaccines. So uh, a good example would be the influenza vaccine where you can give people a protein-based vaccine and it it's, you know, uh, can produce uh, immunity against the virus. But mm -hmm. you know, the, the two newer technologies were the messenger RNA and the viral vector mm -hmm. vaccine. So mm -hmm. when you hear about, you know, for example, AstraZeneca vaccine or the Johnson & Johnson, those are viral vector. Mm -hmm. When you hear about Pfizer and Moderna, those are messenger RNA technology. Now, messenger RNA technology has certain advantages. One is very easy to produce. You know, once the sequence of the virus was known, two days, you have a messenger RNA vaccine ready to go. It's mm -hmm. very easy. Mm -hmm. And that's important because with some of the new variants we're talking about, that you're hearing about, you know, going on in South Africa and mm -hmm. the UK, in the UK. new variants, mm -hmm. you, you can easily produce a messenger RNA vaccine that can address new strains of the virus mm. as, as they emerge. Mm. And the beauty of mRNA technology also is that easy to, because it's easy to produce, you can mass produce it. And as you can imagine, there's a global demand for vaccines. So mm. if you can mass produce it, you can make it more available. Mm -hmm. Then down to the technology, messenger RNA encodes for protein. Messenger RNA is the genetic code that tells that helps your body produce proteins, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It's different from DNA because that's a frequent misconception. That Good, because I was going to go there next. I was going to go there next because no. we, we need to get out yeah. all the way very quickly. You need to explain exactly. to Lagos why an RNA vaccine cannot change your DNA, please. Yeah, because RNA is not DNA. So uh, that's the beauty of the technology. So RNA is what your body uses to make proteins, mm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, DNA is very different. DNA is your genetic structure. It's in, it's a unique part of the cell called the nucleus, so think of it as the core, um, you know? So, so, so um, Dr. Buago, you know, yeah. pretend, that, mm. pretend that my grandmother is listening to the show and she doesn't understand a lot mm. of this big grammar. Could you break yeah. down for her, because she's the one who's getting messages on WhatsApp about it. So could you break mm -hmm. down for her, you know, how, why exactly an RNA cannot change your DNA? So first of all, um, we should not be consuming our health information from WhatsApp, right? <laughs> it's a strong, you know, uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, and sources of information matter. So I just want to get that message out, right? Mm. On my Twitter feed, I decided to be naughty at one point just to express my frustration about misinformation mm -hmm. on, on social media. And I said, if you need to fix a car, do you go to a tailor mm -hmm. or a seamstress, right? <laughs> you, you know, so, so when you want to learn about science and vaccines and health, you want to talk to doctors and scientists and researchers, people who know what they're talking about. So I just want to 
to again just let your listening public know that where you consume your health information matters not everything you see on social media is even true to begin with mm. and there's a lot of misinformation so bottom line is that messenger rna is very different from dna and messenger um the dna is that dna is what makes you you and what you know create does your characteristics the messenger rna does not even get into the parts of the body where that the battle the cells where you have dna hmm. so it doesn't even get into there so there's no interference with dna's it doesn't alter any of your genetic traits it's just great technology that allows your body produce a protein that looks like the virus and that primes your immune system to protect you against the real virus when you're exposed to it Hmm. Lagos, I want to hear from you as well. If you just joined in, you're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, and I've got Dr. Onyema Boago on the show with us today. He um, worked on the Pfizer vaccine. He um, was the principal investigator on the trials for the Pfizer vaccine. He's also an associate professor at Yale University in the United States. And he got his start, you heard him say when we started, uh, from the University of Calabar right here in Nigeria. So, Lagos, let's talk, huh? Do you have questions for the good doctor? Go ahead and give him, uh, give him a, a run for his money. 0700-993-993-993. Ask him your questions about the virus, because they call me all the time and they ask me all these questions. And I'm, I'm a journalist. I don't have the answers to these questions. You know, no. good afternoon. Welcome. Thanks for bringing this expert to talk to us. Yeah. So my question is this. Um, mm. My sister is in the UK and um, she wanted to take the vaccine. Um, there's this thing they told them that if you know you are of childbearing age or you want to have children, you should not take this vaccine. So they told them in their office and some people who who are planning to have children mm. uh, soon were exempted from taking the vaccine. So my question is, if the vaccine does not change DNA, why is it that people who who they want to have children where ask to exempt from taking the vaccine. All right, Martin. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Buagu, he's asking why um, pregnant women's, uh, women, oh, I say women's, pregnant women and women who want to have the, uh, children are told to not take the vaccine. Yeah, so first of all, that's it's not entirely accurate that uh, women were told not to take the vaccine. I think there was some guidance by the World Health Organization. Mm. I think the message there is that, you know, yes, there is uh, some uh, data that's not available in pregnant, not just pregnant, but breastfeeding women, mm -hmm. but that the risk and benefits of the vaccine should be discussed with uh, their physicians. Mm. So let me just uh, address a few things. Mm -hmm. Now, for pregnant women, Pregnant women are at higher risk of complications, certain complications with COVID. Mm. We're finding that uh, pregnant women are having higher risk of things like blood clots that can happen. Mm -hmm. But those who become sick, compared to women their age, pregnant women have a four times higher chance of being on a ventilator, a two times higher chance of dying compared to women same age when they um, their pregnancy outcomes, they have higher rates of needy cesarean section, higher rates of preterm birth, and the babies also go into the neonatal ICU when they are born. So the important thing to highlight here is that pregnant women are uniquely at risk for COVID-19. And so when you're talking about risk benefits, uh, it's pretty clear that you really want to expose pregnant women to, to the vaccine. Hmm. To date, we don't, we haven't identified any major concerns mm -hmm. with the pregnancy and the vaccines. Mm -hmm. We had about 23 women, even though we didn't want to include pregnant women in the Pfizer vaccine study, we eventually had about 20 something women mm -hmm. who got pregnant all through the study okay. before they got the vaccine. In between those one and two, okay. after those two, okay. they got uh, pregnant because I know some people are saying there's some myths around the vaccine. You won't be able to get pregnant. Which is mm -hmm. aggravating. Okay, so people got pregnant after they received the two doses of vaccines. So I want to make that clear. Okay. Now that we rolled out the vaccine in the US, we already have almost 15,000 pregnant women mm -hmm. who've received either the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're following those women, but so far, the data is quite encouraging. Mm. So again, I think that the benefits of having a vaccine that protects you against getting sick and having complications as a pregnant woman are important. The last point I want to make is, you know, um, 
women make up a huge um, number of the healthcare workforce, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of nurses are women and they are on the front lines of caring for patients. So there are certain women who could be pregnant who are at high risk of acquiring COVID because they're medical professionals, they're doctors, they're nurses, they're, you know, working in health systems. And so it's important that in spite of you know, some of the limited data that we have, hmm. but because of the good safety records so far, I would recommend that uh, pregnant women, um, you know, get the vaccine. Hmm. Now, if you're very low risk for COVID-19, which is unusual because there's a lot of community transmissions, so I don't know how anybody can say low risk, you can have a conversation with your doctor about the risk, risk and benefits. Okay. We've got uh, um, a question from... Um uh, Aroma, who is in Snake Island, and he's asking to ask you if you have taken the vaccine, Dr. Buago. Yeah. So, so uh, okay, uh, I'll answer that question in two ways. So, yes, I took a uh, vaccine. My, my receiving the vaccine was televised nationally in the U.S. I was on a national TV station and took my first dose of vaccine. Mm -hmm. I took my second dose of vaccine in the first week of January, and I'm doing just fine. And, you know, I'm an infectious disease doctor. I care for COVID patients. I'm on the ward all the time, both in my research work and my clinical work. Mm -hmm. I'm exposed to COVID patients. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just so happy that I received the two doses of vaccine the side effect i had was a little bit of uh, pain in my arm that mm -hmm. happened a few hours after the vaccine mm -hmm. lasted about a day went away i didn't take anything i didn't need i know you call it panadol in nigeria but i didn't take those kind of things i didn't need to take any of that and it was well worth it uh, uh, to, to get the vaccine so again the point i want to make is you know some of the conspiracy theories about the vaccine are it causes infertility it's targeted against you know Black and minority communities, you know, but think about it. If there was this big conspiracy theory about a vaccine that did harms, how can it be that there's a huge appetite to receive the vaccine? So in the U.S. now, I think there's been about, you know, we've almost had 50 million vaccines. Vaccinations. You said. Hmm. Yes, almost 30 million doses, you know, um, have been administered to people. And in fact, we're actually finding that, and we're not happy with this, that majority of the, va the vaccines are being taken up by white people. And that, you know, black and minority communities, Latinx individuals are not getting the vaccines as much. Mm. So if people wanted to harm the black race, would they be rushing to take the vaccine? So there's a lot of conspiracy theories there that don't make any sense. And I think that all it does is it keeps us away from benefiting from science. Think mm. about the role vaccine plays in our lives. Think about the hepatitis B vaccine, the measles vaccine you got when you were a kid, uh, polio vaccines, and how it has made very, you know, significant either life-threatening or disabling diseases has really made them disappear or at least significantly made the numbers down. So mm. again, with the COVID-19 vaccines, history repeats itself. This is, you could almost record how people are reacting now, mm -hmm. how they reacted to the first vaccines that were produced history repeats itself mm -hmm. but i hope that over time as more and more people take the vaccine mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. that people can can then you know feel more comfortable and we're actually finding mm -hmm. that more and more people are ready to receive the vaccine as they see more and more people take it let's say uh, let's take a few more calls legal 0700-993-993-993 i have a lot of messages on whatsapp but you can send yours as well whatsapp is 080-959-75805 streaming live on facebook so you can watch live and then um, on facebook and YouTube, and then we'll take them as we go along. Facebook, 99.3, YouTube, Korea Info FM. If you missed any part of this conversation, the first half, the first few, if you can't be in your car for the rest of it, um, you can simply wait until it is ready and then listen back again to the podcast. Femi is in Sir Larry. Hello, Femi. Hello. How Sandra. are you? Welcome. Go ahead. I'm very well. Yes, um, I have a question um, um, about vaccines and um, observations. Hmm. Um, I want to know what difference it would make between um, a communicable disease and uh, a non-communicable disease. For example, polio vaccines, uh, you don't get polio from another person, but you could get um, uh, coronavirus from another person. So um, if I have, if I've taken the vaccine, for example, mm -hmm. and um, I touch a surface and... Um, is it that I won't be able to transmit 
that coronavirus because I've taken the vaccine mm. or I could still transmit coronavirus. It's just that it wouldn't affect me because the mentality would be in this part of the world, we have this funny thinking that oh, I'm already protected so I could misbehave. Mm. So uh, would, would, it, would it be that I would still be able to transmit the disease to other people mm -hmm. and it will affect them and they would probably have issues subsequently? All right, Femi, thank, thank you for you. calling. Uh, Dr. Buago. Yeah, thank you, Femi. You asked the important questions. So I, I just want to clarify something. When we talk about non-communicable diseases, mm -hmm. we're talking about things like diabetes, hypertension, and things things that are not associated with infectious agents that can be transmitted. Hmm. So it's not accurate that polio is not uh, a contagious illness. It is. It is transmitted, and it's transmitted by food and water. Okay, so it's fe fecal orally transmitted. So just important to put that out there. Hmm. Okay, so like, you know, like coronavirus, it can be passed from person to person, and both polio and COVID-19 are vaccine-preventable diseases. Hmm. And one of the reasons why polio has been eradicated in many parts of the world is because of vaccines. Mm. And it's one of the very early vaccines that ever became available mm. um, uh, to the world, okay? So I wanted to clarify that. The results you're hearing a lot of are about the ability of the vaccines to protect against symptomatic disease. Mm. So some studies for the Pfizer vaccine, it compared everyone with symptoms regardless of being mild all the way through severe. Some of the more recent studies have looked at only a moderate and severe disease. Mm. But the efficacy is so high if you think about the efficacy that vaccines typically have, having vaccines that are 80%, 95% effective are just really, um, you know, blockbuster for an infectious disease. Mm. So just really want to put it in context for you how highly effective these uh, COVID vaccines, vaccines are, are mm. uh, to be honest. Mm. Um, so it protects against disease. I think the relevance even more for Nigeria would be if you get a vaccine that can protect you, let's forget even uh, asymptomatic disease, we'll talk about that next. Mm -hmm. If you can get a disease that protects you from getting really sick, remember in a low resource setting, we don't always have ventilators for everyone. We right. don't always have enough oxygen supply, right? right? So if you get a vaccine that can protect you from getting sick, that's a big thing that can save your life. So just want to highlight that. Right. Now, there's uh, not everybody that has COVID has symptoms. And so you can have what we call asymptomatic infection, which means you carry the virus, but it's not making you sick. You don't have a fever, you don't have cough, but you have the virus and you can transmit that virus to someone. Mm. We don't have enough of that data for the vaccines yet. We have some signals. For example, the Moderna vaccine, which is a messenger RNA vaccine, decreases that by about 67%. Mm. Okay, so it, it by 67%, it decreases the risk of asymptomatic infection. The other trials, including the Pfizer trial, we're trying to gather the data. I have no doubt that the vaccines stop people from carrying the virus. The question is, by how much? Mm. It's not a matter of if it does, it's a matter of by how much. So I just wanted to make that point and really clear. The last thing I want to say is another way we can all protect ourselves because we are talking about protecting ourselves mm -hmm. and protecting infecting others mm -hmm. is this concept of herd immunity. Herd immunity means that if enough of us get vaccinated mm -hmm. and have immunity against the virus, mm -hmm. then we can even protect those who are unvaccinated. But to achieve that, you need at least 70% of mm. people within a community, a city, a state, a town, your villa, right? Enough people to be, you know, to be vaccinated such that when the virus tries to enter the community, it can't because there's many people that are immune mm. such that even the people who are not immune mm. can be protected by those who are immune. That's herd immunity. So my message here is that we can have highly effective vaccines but not re reap the benefits from them because we just don't have enough people vaccinated to protect each other. And that's uh, Dr. Onyema Obuago from yesterday. If you want to listen to the rest of that interview, the podcast is available online. Search any of your streaming services, Apple, Google, uh, Spotify, Anchor, Radio Republic, Nigeria, Info FM. Yes, we have a podcast uh, uh, service as well. Go ahead and listen uh, to those. Coming up is the business news. After the business news, we'll bring you glass ceiling. On glass ceiling, we'll talk about that that policewoman who was dismissed because she got pregnant out of wedlock. I'm Sandra Ezekwesli, Lagos. Don't go away. And now, the business news. The business news.